<laughs> the world is changing. Who now has the strength to stand against the armies of Isengard? And Mordor? To stand against the might of Sauron and Saruman? And the union of the two? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Recording after vomiting for 48 straight hours, um, definitely, definitely the way to go. And yeah, we've, we've made fun of it being long, but that long, <laughs> having to look that far up? There's a sex joke in there somewhere, but I'm going to leave it alone. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. There, there's still not quite any kind of elvish or dwarf that I have found that you can put the two words greater good together with. I, I Tolkien, for some reason, didn't want those two to exist, but the greater good. Oh, that's fine. Um, we'll see now. I honestly thought where you were going with that for a second is the tree beard monologue when you says there is no curse in elvish, orcish, or entish that <laughs> greater good. Cool. Uh, yeah. This is episode 382, 382. Oh, and tonight we are doing episode two of our four part series on the Lord of the Rings. And of course, we are watching The Two Towers. Uh, joining me tonight, I am Sean um, Allred, by the way, and joining me tonight is Andrew Potatoes Jimison. That's very uh, appropriate that you did that, because uh, my response to you, regardless of what my middle name was, was going to be, <laughs> we need a few good taters. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so, there we go. Cool. Sam. What? Why are elephants in fantasy movies always 40 feet tall, Vector? Because they are. No. Oh. That's it. They, they, they eat different grass over there. But Sean. Yes. In all likelihood, I would absolutely send you into a sewer drain and blow you the, the to smithereens. <laughs> you would let me be the so, um, the Olympic uh, torch bearer? You could be so the I... Olympic torch bearer and take two arrows <laughs> to the sewer and, and fall into the, uh, into the bombs. By the way. Yeah. By the way. Sure. There were already people holding flames near that hole. I just got to say that. That's the first time I've noticed this time that there are orc or orcai or whatever they are standing outside that wall with flames. So, what you're saying was, is it didn't need to be the special guy. It could have been just any regular flame. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But it, but you had to have the the the, the dun, suspension. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you needed the. Chariots of Fire theme going. Yeah, I'm sure someone's done a future uh, <laughs> uh, a fan edit with that. That they're <laughs> making their uh, return. Uh, they too. Uh, they uh, are our two towers. Their show and ours make the two towers. I had a better way in my mind to craft this, but I can't think of what it is at this point. <laughs> um, so I'll just simply say, Joe, Andy Circus deserves an Oscar, and Mark. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys, from the Digital Ooh. Dissection Ooh. podcast. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. waiting for you to say something with quality so that we could go, you know, a chance for Digital Dissection to show its quality. <laughs> no, yeah. No, uh, this, is, this is proof that I obviously don't tell you guys what your middle names are going to be. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it would not It would be probably better if I did, but I don't. So, therefore... No, no, no. It's it's more fun this way. Yeah. You don't see it coming. It's it's, it's off the cuff. It's, it's good. Yeah. Hey, welcome <laughs> back, guys. How we doing? You know, uh, I am doing pretty good after just recovering from a stomach bug. This is the best way, I think, to get back on the saddle. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I mean, recording after vomiting for 48 straight hours, um, definitely, definitely the way to go. I think so. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's actually on WebMD somewhere. I think that's actually yeah. pretty accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's definitely a prescription, which usually it is a prescribed thing. I yeah. believe we had to have a doctor's note for Mark to be here tonight. Sure. So what? <laughs> so you, what you're saying is you had a fever, and the only prescription was more podcast. Darn right. Yes. Awesome. Yes. That's I got to stay home with mom though. She made me chicken noodle. So. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. that's sweet. 
Yeah, it's strange. always a great day when you get to skip school. <laughs> ma'am, 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 hot pockets. Okay, <laughs> so here we are, set to record our review of Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. I'm very excited to talk about this movie for many reasons. One of which is that uh, I said it last week. This is not a big surprise, though it will be to you two, unless you listened to last week's episode. That this is my favorite of the trilogy. And I've probably watched this one now with this watching probably 10 or 11 or 12 times. Wow. And um, we That's can. That's a lot. It, it, it is a lot. Well, Especially for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, in right. fairness, I've only watched the extended version twice. Okay, that was okay. the question I had. I was going to say, you would have spent at least a year on two of those playthroughs then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the extended versions. Yeah. Now, one thing I did want to say to people that haven't seen the extended edition. Now, if you manage to sit through the three hours and 55 minutes of the whole movie, there is no end credits. So <laughs> if, if you watch <laughs> all the way to the end, that's that's your own problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which, by the way, I was so the movie ended, and I was just sitting with my wife, and we were just chatting. And the music is playing because it's pretty Howard Shore music. And I look up, and I notice that we're just seeing names. That there's no, you know, break in the between that say what they are. Right? It's just names. Yeah. It's just scrolling mm-hmm. and scrolling forever. And I thought, what in the world is this? And so I had to rewind to see what the heck it is. It's like they're Lord of the Rings fan club, like this. High oh, yeah. level fan club, they get credit in the movie. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was really impressed. I mean, it went on for probably about seven minutes. I mean, like seven minutes of credits is just their names. Was- and to think that it's not even like a Patreon, like they don't have to, have to, they have to pay for that privilege. That's, that's the modern era we live in now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. They just, they're yeah. just there for being fans. Yeah. It's amazing. So, um, I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the read just because I don't know. I guess we probably we probably should just because, you know, my script says we should. So Andrew, tell us what this movie is and then we'll do five word reviews and I'm really interested to kind of see all of our, you know, did all did all of us watch this in the theater or like how did we experience this for the first time? So Andrew, while Frodo and Sam edge closer to Mordor with the help of the shifty Gollum, The Divided Fellowship makes a stand against Sauron's new ally, Saruman, and his hordes of Isengard. He has hordes of Isengard? That's a word. Hordes. Hordes. Yeah, not whores, Sean. Don't don't get too excited. uh, But even still, hordes of Isengard makes it sound like there are lots of Isengards. Yeah. Yeah, just like like outside Chicago. It's just like a... You know, up and coming neighborhood they built outside the city, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> hordes of Isengard. Anyway, hordes from Sorry. hordes from Isengard. Maybe from. Well, you're Sean of Charlotte. I am. Yeah, yeah I am Sean of Charlotte. Yeah. You're not wrong. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I know we've all seen this movie probably at least more than once. Uh, did, did we all see this in the theater? Oh yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, I saw this in Boone at App State, and I remember going into the theater, aging five years, coming out, and there was at least two inches of snow on the ground when I came out of the theater. It had snowed that much <laughs> while uh, while we were in there um, in the incubator. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Ooh. Did I, I went yeah, this was a midnight showing. For me, it was a midnight showing Thursday Golly. and Friday. Yeah. Uh, and uh yeah, I didn't oh, see the next that week. Night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went I went to school tired as shit the next day. It was yeah. wow. uh it's kinda rough. Oof. Kinda rough. Yeah. But I enjoyed every minute yeah. of it. Yeah, this uh this was the first and only movie I've ever seen from the front row of a movie theater. Oh, so oh gosh. I left the theater oh. unable to actually bring my neck forward at all. <laughs> I was just looking up the entire way home. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh my gosh. All I mean and yeah, we've we've made fun of it being long, but that long having to look <laughs> that far up, ouch. Yeah, yeah, Dude. we were all like coolly walking, like we don't have to be there early. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We'll show up five minutes before the flick starts. It'll be okay. Nope, nope. Should have been there at least fifteen minutes early. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Should, oh, should we made. remind remind people for a moment that this was what like. 17 years ago 19 19 years ago 19 oh my god so yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Well, <laughs> t- 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 yeah. the two thousands were fresh and new. Yeah. Still. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I, I, Joe's oh. talking about you know getting there in time for seats. And it's like, yeah, that was oh, the thing. Yeah. You know, that was the yeah, thing. That... Yeah, you could, you couldn't pick your seats back in that day. You just you showed up. Yeah. The, well, there's yeah. still some places that are arcane that don't do that now. Mm-hmm. So I've mentioned my friend Andrew on the show many times. Not Andrew that's joining us, but another friend Andrew. I've mentioned him many times. Yeah, we're not friends. Show. And he um, <laughs> I was. He and I were going to go see this together, and we were very late. So we walk in as like the opening camera helicopter shot of the mountains, and we were only going to be in the front row. So Ooh. we watch. I watched that opening scene where where Gandalf is fighting the uh, the Balrog like from the front row. I thought I was going to puke, and so <laughs> I got up and I said, "I can't do this." So I kind of went to the back, and I'm just kind of standing there off to the side. And so while Sam and Frodo are dealing with Gollum, Andrew and I are trying to scout for two seats. And we find two seats, but neither are next to each other. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. instead of just us being separated, Andrew walks up and asks seven people to slide down a seat. Oh, Oh, my God. And they did. sounds like him. And they did. They were very gracious, and we we apologized oh. and thanked them, and we sat down and we got to enjoy the movie. But I I remember thinking later, I can't believe we did that. We were such jerks. I should have just like just it would have <laughs> been just as you know, I guess just as distracting if I walked in front of those mm-hmm. seven people to sit down. But still, anyway, that's my. That's my experience. So, Joe, I don't I mean like I'm surprised you're still alive for watching that movie in the front row. <laughs> yeah, man. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I can't have children anymore. That's a, that's a given. <laughs> uh, after that. Um. Yeah, I uh this is a weird segue, but I'm going to go here anyway. So, when I was working on the TV show when I was living in Charleston in 2006, Uh, The movie, I think, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp one had just come out. And Mm -hmm. a bunch of us went to go watch it in the theater. And I'm standing in line there, and I'm talking with one of the camera operators. And I said, hey, Jeff, um, when you go to the theater, where do you like to sit? And he says, I want to sit so close that my field of vision is only the screen. Because Mm -hmm. that's how he Uh views movies, is through a viewfinder. Mm -hmm. He goes, where do you sit? And I say, two thirds of the way back, where the sound is the best. You know, as the sound guy on the on the TV show, obviously that's where I would want to go. So I just always thought that was interesting. That I said, you would you would torture yourself by sitting that close. And he goes, that's the only way I can do it. He says, if I see other people or even the curtains, like it, it's distracting. I go, oh, okay. Cool. He needs special uh, glasses that like a little cutout square. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. like, like horse vision dudes. Like blinders, yeah, like like horse horse blinders, yeah, Yeah, exactly. He would have he would have hated the theaters on the military bases we used to live on because they had massive curtains that would open, but you'd you'd be able to see them at no like didn't matter what point in the movie you saw these massive freaking things. Um, And uh, weird thing about military theaters, if you guys have never been, you have to stand for the national anthem before the movie plays. Oh really? Anywhere else? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I well, oh lord, I might be dating myself. I do remember when they would play it in movie theaters. Really? I didn't didn't know that was a thing. No, that was a thing either. Like it sounds like something from like 1945 when we're at the height of like, (laughs) you know, we're getting ready to watch the newsreel. So therefore, we was Florida. I don't know, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I remember doing that. I was just buying my I mean, war bonds, was, and I, I mean, and I got, I got, I got some junior mints. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a beer and a, mm-hmm. and a paper paper box, yeah. and I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I just watched Captain America punch out a Nazi, and now I'm gonna go and buy some war bonds. Okay, yeah. stand for the national anthem. That's too funny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you think that's weird when they actually really like the movie. There's a 21 gun salute right there in the theater. Yeah, <laughs> you just pop right off. <laughs> really oh, yeah, effective, man. but boy, it makes you want to pee yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, really get into the meat that is this movie, uh, The Two Towers. Um, which, by the way, anyone show of hands, which doesn't work for a podcast, but <laughs> do you guys remember when? There was talk of changing the name of the movie because this had come out 
this movie was released in December. Oh, of, because of mm-hmm. September yeah. 11th. Yeah. 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 You guys remember that? Like, I I remember vaguely a little conversation about that here and there, and mm-hmm. people were very sensitive about it. But even then, I was like, guys, it's it's the name of the book that was written years, decades before mm-hmm. this event. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it, not like Spider-Man doing the web between the two buildings mm-hmm. um, uh, that they cut from that. So it's, yeah, that was yeah, silly. Hell of a trailer for that, by the way. Oh, it was an amazing right? trailer. It's one oh, of my yeah. favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, I get that. Like that, I get that. But this is yeah, wasn't it going to be called like uh, Las Dos Torres instead? Is that what they're going to go with? <laughs> just, I let's go with Spanish. It's exotic now. Most of our audience <laughs> won't know what it means. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, I Google's think, not a thing yet, so yeah. Well, yeah, Google Translate. Um, I don't know what they were going to call it. It was just maybe just going to be like book two or uh, a pair of of towers. Yeah. I don't know, but it was, horrible. Anyway. It was actually going to be uh, the Lord of the Rings Part Two. Part Two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, this was also like the extreme era as well, so oh, you know, yeah. it, it could have been like. Rohan battle extreme, and I would have gone and see it. Sure. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. 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 I like that. Popped idea. up on Mountain Dew. Yeah, I would have done it. <laughs> Come at you like a spider monkey, Andrew. Why don't you give us? No, who goes first? Sam, give us your sure. five word review. Um, I have got um, I've got several here. Uh, the first one is a deeper, bigger story, and my second one is um, a few missteps on the way. No. Oh, okay. And the, the only reason I say that, and, and this is the first time I really sat down to watch this with, with a critical eye, and it's maybe because we broke it up into four flipping nights to watch with the kids. Yeah. Um <laughs> it, it takes a while to get to Helm's Deep. Yeah. And it yeah. takes a while to really I mean, you gotta admit, the last hour of this movie is fantastic. It's just non-stop cinematic gold. But mm-hmm. so, I, I think it takes a little while to get there. And I'm, I don't have problems with it per se because it's still su- just done so well and it looks so good, but it seems slow in, in parts. And I think the Rohan stuff got a little prolonged um, in the fact that they were, you know, they had to introduce us to a bunch of new characters and they had mm-hmm. to introduce us to new lands. They had to introduce talking trees for God's sake. Right. And, um, I think because the story got bigger, they had to once again, give us the character development that they gave us in fellowship now with even more people. And I think that bogged down a little bit. There's, there's a reason why a lot of people said that this, this, these books were unadaptable. Right. And it's because of this. And if this movie cut that out, it it would have been a worse movie, I think. So I'm, 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 nitpicking at very very small things here um i think Gollum is flipping amazing um yes there are some seams around the character where you can kind of see the the early 2000 technology sometimes he doesn't quite fit in the scene um in terms of shadows and uh you know where he's touching items and things like that um but again you have to think of the technology at the time and they just did a fantastic job with that uh, there are some CGI seams in parts. Um, I think the trees sometimes get a little off, but I mean, I don't know about you guys. I haven't seen many talking trees in a long time. So, yeah. um, my wife, by the way, this is the first time she's actually watched this, this one with me. Yeah. She, she, made it. Uh, she, well, she refused. I, I tried to get her to watch fellowship years ago and I think we almost broke up over it. And, um, (laughs) now that the kids are watching, she wants to watch and she wanted me to mention to you guys that her favorite part was the tree dousing itself with water, um, as, as the dam was broken and she giggled so much at that. I, it it was wonderful. (laughs) So, um, Uh, Sam, Sam, I got to cut you off for one second. Yeah. And, and it's because tree, I am no tree. I am an ant. (laughs) <laughs> exactly right mm-hmm. so what we see here is fellowship was a small story right certainly there was epic parts to it mm-hmm. um this story becomes bigger than all of them right this is when you realize the the importance 
of why the ring has to be destroyed. And it starts to really get this she- this Shakespearean uh, feel to it, to where the story is just so big and so well thought out and so put together that you're just in for a treat. And, and I love that feeling. And, you know, you really get that in the, you know, we'll talk about the third movie next week. But this movie and Helm's Deep and God love the siege of Helm's Deep is just so good. Um, you know, even though, you know, it's CGI a little bit, uh, you know, with the, the Orkai and stuff like that. Uh, uh, I don't know what else that can be said other than, than glowing um, remarks on how Jackson put this thing together. So I'm going to stop with that. I, I started with a little nitpicking um, where it was a little slow, but I'm going to end uh, with, with a bang. And um, uh, just, I like it. I love it. This is, this is one of my favorite That's movies. I also, I also think it's my favorite of the three. Um, and it's only because of that last third of the movie that is just perfect. It's just perfect. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I yep. don't really disagree with anything you said there. Um, I'm gonna you better s- not. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's, I have nothing to say to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, take it. Uh, Mark, I'll let you go next. All right. I was going to say walking far, but not alone. Because if you think about this movie, as, as Sam put it here, uh, there is a lot of traveling that goes on, a lot of it on foot. Mm-hmm. Um, but but none of our characters are truly ever alone. Everyone's kind of paired off. Now, there's one point in this movie, though, where you might say, well, hey, Aragorn's alone, isn't he? He's you know, he's got to he's gotta make his way back to Helm's Deep by himself. But I would say, and, no. And the horse. He is with Hasufel. Yes, he is with, <laughs> he is with the gray coat horse that he rides well into Return of the King. So I don't think he's truly alone. And I'm uh, sure he has the power of friendship somewhere. He sure there. does. He sure <laughs> does, man. That never goes away. Yeah. He's got that ring with the heart on it, like, you know, like from freaking uh, Captain or uh, Captain Planet, you know? I mean, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's got that heart ring going on. So, um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's really what I, I uh, have always thought about this movie was that it did a really good job of balancing all of these individual characters, despite the fact that you have to get in, introduced to new ones. And... Mm-hmm. Each one of these separate plot lines uh, doesn't struggle. Each one of these separate plot lines, you know, weaves, you know, back into the other ones, even if um, they don't actually meet again until the next movie. But it's it's fun to see how all of these, you know, pieces play a part in, in what's going on in these different, you know, areas of Middle Earth. So, um, so yeah, yeah, and and I will agree that it's easily my favorite out of the three too, and. Yep. Mostly because it doesn't need to end roughly about 16 times before the end credit is actually rolled. So <laughs> there is that. It does. It ends want, with you wanting more, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and that that's a good thing about a movie. Not that the that Return of the King is, is anything bad, but you're right. You know, you, you kind of want to get out of your seat at a certain point when they're all saying goodbye. You know, I think going back to the first movie we, that we talked about last week, I think the you didn't leave that one. And I think, Sean, you mentioned that there were people upset in your theater thinking that it was the only movie and, you know, what was next. This one does leave you wanting more. I don't think the first one yeah. necessarily did as much. And I think that could be why those people kind of felt that way. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For Joe and Mark, for the, and to update anyone else just joining us tonight – uh, when we saw Lord of the, the, the Fellowship, people in the theater were, I mean, yelling, pissed, bad, bad words were, were said. And Andrew yep, and I yep. had to stand up and say, there are two more movies coming. You know, like they didn't know. They just yes. thought this was like they had taken three books and rolled it into one movie. Oh, that would be horrible. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, it's, it's almost, almost as horrible as, as, as taking, taking one three... book and turning it into three movies. <laughs> yeah, you took my joke. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You, you took my joke right from me, but you're 100% right. Um, yeah. Stealer. Uh, no, I think you're right, though. I, I, I think, because, like, one of the things that I like about this movie is that it kind of reminds me of Empire Strikes Back, which is my favorite Star Wars film, is that... This movie is kind of the part where 
things have gotten bad and now the heroes have to really dig in to overcome the thing. Uh-huh. And and I know that this movie ends kind of on a high note, you know, the that cuz they win the battle of Helm's Deep and and there's a little bit of hope and um Isengard has been effectively taken off of the board as a as mm-hmm. a as a dangerous thing. So it's not entirely like, you know, Empire, you know, it would be a little bit different if it was, but this movie's still like this movie goes is, you know, really rough and then you have to kind of climb back up and then the next movie we kind of have the same thing where things are bad and then they have to overcome. So I think that's one of the reasons why I like this one besides Helm's Deep and some of the uh, new characters we get to meet. Joe, what you got? Uh, my my review, uh, five words here, is going to be can't ask why someone's white. <laughs> Going mean girls, can't ask why someone's white uh, a little bit. But no. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> went with, because I, I, I liked um, Gandalf in this movie quite a bit. Um, so you have, like, for, like, if you've read, like, the books, um, like the Hobbit through through here, you realize that Gandalf's solution is just to throw hobbits at a problem and kind of step aside a little bit. <laughs> and so you have him at the end of uh, the end of Fellowship. He's he's gone fighting the Balrog, and then you see him actually be successful at that, and then come back more powerful than ever. And I just thought that it was it was like Gandalf's real moment, and it was one of my favorite parts in this movie. When he actually comes back, you know, at Helm's Deep at like the eleventh hour to like save everything was probably my favorite part of the movie. As I was arched over in the movie theater, <laughs> now blind <laughs> and paralyzed from the neck down, yeah, um, and apparently <laughs> sterile, too. happy all the same. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, the funny thing is, my wife saw Gandalf pop in there um, with the horses, mm-hmm. and she said, "This is just like Game of Thrones." <laughs> and I'm like, oh, um, well, let, let me tell you about which was written first. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Game of Thrones yep. is kind of like this? Yeah. Yeah, right. That's funny. Okay. It'd be more like Game of Thrones if both both Gandalf and the horse died by the end of the first movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> ne- like needlessly by something dumb, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like... Mm-hmm. I can't think of what it would be, you know, like one of the no, giant... he would he would die of like a he, he got stubbed his toe and the infection raged his body. Yeah, and then yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly it. I was thinking Which... of something equally mm-hmm. dumb too, but yeah, yours is just yeah, you're right. Or, or, they, yeah. or... if you get shot on a toilet, either way. Yeah, yeah, I get. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just thinking, like, I think enough, like bringing up the horse. Like, I remember like seeing like shadow facts, like triumphantly strolling across um, the screen at one point in time, like. It was dead silent in the movie theater, and one woman from the back of the movie theater just goes, "Oh my God, look at that horse!" <laughs> just completely enamored. Like, like of all the things in the movie so far, the horse blew her mind, and she's she just, said it loud enough for everyone to hear. She's just jaw. I could hear it now. She's, she's back there. She's like, "Oh my God, oh my God. look at that horse! At that oh my horse. God, look at, look at him!" <laughs> Gorgeous. Go away. What's the field? That thing. So, look, look at that mane. Oh, it I, is I, beautiful. Beautiful. If I wasn't sitting down, I'd have to. Let me tell you. I'm getting beclemped over this horse right now. He, he's he's got to have the mane and tail in, in, in that mane. I'm sure of it. <laughs> you do like a really great version of Lois, like a male yeah. version of Lois. That's <laughs> kind of what that sounds like a little bit. <laughs> uh, we we do some impressions on our show. Uh, sometimes uh, the random Rick Rhymes, you know, accent comes out and it's just there, and you don't know why it just shows up. Yeah. And every now and again, I am an Eastern Orthodox Jewish lady. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. You should uh, you should do more of that. I think I should, in fact, just have you record our new intro with uh, with that voice. <laughs> <laughs> So we, so Andrew can do Scottish and you can do Eastern European Jewish lady, like you know we. You oh, go. and you could do German, Sean. Uh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not debatable. quite. I think it's yeah, think it's damn good. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, Andrew. <laughs> well, I I love by the way that uh, Joe, you, you you're saying that uh Gandalf treated the hobbits basically like they were a bug fogger uh <laughs> before he went into the crawl space of his house. 
<laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> threw them in there. <laughs> yep. They're yeah. halflings, right? Just, yeah, just yeah. keep throwing them there. Yep, they're fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, um, I can't disagree with anything that's been said so far. Um, my five word review, I have a couple of them here. One's not five words, but you know, it's, get over it. Um, best sequel in cinematic history. Oh, wow. I think that that's fair. I stand by that. I don't care what you think. Now, <laughs> the next one here is a two parter. The battle for the ring begins. Dot, dot, dot. Once we get there. <laughs> like like Sam said it's a it's kind of a slow burn uh and the last third of the movie really is spectacular not that the the first two thirds are are bad in any way um no. it's it's really it's three three stories like Mark said that are just woven together that you're invested in all three of them you know mm-hmm. there's not there's not one story, and a lot of times TV shows will do this, and you don't really care about one of the stories. Uh, but this, you really do. You're invested in all three. And they're so <laughs> three-eyed raven. <laughs> yeah, they're so. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, um, they're so wonderfully woven together that you barely notice that you're watching three separate stories really and and perfectly put together right you've got the battle of helms deep meanwhile (laughs) meanwhile the trees are swaying (laughs) and it's like the slowest thing and you feel that right you feel Mm -hmm. that urgency that they're trying to get them to help and the trees are figuring out that that they aren't orcs so yeah it's like (laughs) it's it's so well done um i will say that this is certainly darker than the first film Mm-hmm. Um, and, and of course it has to be so that we can, mm-hmm. we can eventually get to the, the, the final climax of the series and of the trilogy and, and come back to the light. But, uh, we have to feel that our antagonists, uh, excuse me, protagonists are, uh, you know, in, in danger and in peril mm-hmm. so that we can, we can have that sigh of relief at the end. But, uh, I agree. This is this has got to be my favorite of the three. I thought, uh, you know, I think I said before that I really like the Return of the King, but after watching it again, I, this one I think probably takes the place of the favorite of the three. So, uh, you've already mentioned Gollum. I I remember specifically that scene in the theater just being astounded by how well it was done and just you really feel like you're watching two characters yeah yeah you know and uh this whole uh this whole motion cap that we're getting is so, is so well done and I, we mentioned it last week we would not be where we are uh with motion cap today without this yep totally agree absolutely okay i double down hey by all means Double your your meat there for just sixty five cents extra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, are you Irish because I'm Dublin? Oh, <laughs> Dublin. Nice. <laughs> there you go. See, that was like that was dangerously close between like a McDonald's and a weird like porn like ad. Double your meat for only for, for extra. <laughs> yeah. I say you got you get like, pay more for that where we're from, baby. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know why, but it's just one of those dumb memories that I have. Uh, so when we were on a road a mission trip. We are, we stopped at a Wendy's in Texas, right? Of course, this is only in Texas where it was a Wendy's. You can double the meat of whatever sandwich you got. You can double the meat for only like sixty five cents. So Andrew, again, my same friend Andrew, the guy who I went and saw this movie with. We really need to get him on here. I I know. You know he, really he, he's been talked about way too much. Yeah, almost to just nothing else to just defend himself. Uh, yeah, he he's got he's the, like Bob Sacamano. You never really see him. Yeah, exactly. No, he's there. Yeah, that's true. Art Vandelay. He's... <laughs> yeah. So he got the triple, the triple burger, and then doubled it. It had six patties of meat. Holy crap! God. Oh, he so he's it. still alive. He's right. still alive. Yeah. After eating that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was that was probably only half that's his impressive. meal, by the way. Yeah. Is, oh, <laughs> okay. <yes>. I have, <laughs> again, this is. <laughs> See, now uh, this brings up the yeah. entirely different term of the two towers where the turd breaks into two pieces and gets stuck in the toilet <laughs> because that's what's going to happen when you eat a burger of that size. I'm sorry. Six patties. Yeah. yeah. Six patties. Shit. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what it was. It was a six patty shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> had, to, had to go there. My bad. All right. Five word review. My five word review. Okay. Battle of Helm's Deep Perfection. And movie feels bigger. Sorry. Movie feels bigger each viewing. I was trying to add a width there, but that would make six. So, um, yeah. My so wife I, says that too. That it's bigger with each viewing. Yeah, it's nice that, that she says. You know, mine doesn't say that. Yeah, I was going to no, say no, that no, the no. joke is the other way, but yeah. <laughs> um, actually, uh, sorry, side side track here. Uh, I was teaching some mallet players how to play, and uh, you're supposed to play these mallets off of the bars of the xylophone or the marimba about three inches. And one of the kids said, "How do I know what three inches is?" And I really, <laughs> yeah. really wanted to say. Take a look in your pants, but I didn't. I, yeah, I that's that's one of those where it's you like, probably went to class here. You should ask your mom about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this movie. Gosh, what what more can I say about it other than I love this movie? Um, I watched it. Uh, I had to watch it also in in in, in pair at a half, right? I had to kind of get to a, a stopping point. And so basically, what I did was I watched pretty much up to almost the Battle of Home Deep, and then watched the rest of it. It's not quite half. It was more like mm, you know two and a half hours, and then the last hour and fifty minutes or whatever it is. But uh, yeah, I just I love this movie, and I think Sam went first. So I think your point was that. It does feel like this movie takes a long time to get to Helm's Deep because the the movie yeah. does kind of feel like that's the point of the movie is to have this battle, yeah. and obviously yeah. it's not the only point. We have lots of little conflicts along the way. We have to have resolution with Marion and Pippin, who have this really really interesting story arc where they, you know, in the first movie they're just kind of foils, right? You know, Pippin knocks the thing over in. Moria and causes the issues and and like like they don't really do anything other than make jokes but in this movie they cause actual change right they affect Mm -hmm. the outcome of the world um, because Pippin has a good idea which is just a really cool thing it's just so fun and yeah um, the other part one of my favorite moments and I, I put this on Twitter Probably my single favorite moment of, um, you know, like in movies where you have like the like the hero who has the a fan you know a family member die like every Marvel movie ever, and they have uh-huh. the the no scream, and it's usually terrible. It's usually really poorly acted, or it's bad, or it's over the top, or whatever. Right? Uh, case in point: Star Trek Into Darkness when Spock screams Khan. It's terrible. Oh. Chef's kiss, uh, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like acting school, man. They teach you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Chris, mm-hmm. yeah. It's he, not like when Shatner scream, screamed Khan. When Shatner he screamed had, it, it's fine because it was, I don't know, it, yeah. it, it fit. And maybe because, I don't know. I don't want to get into that argument. <laughs> <laughs> but when Treebeard <laughs> screams, because it's not a no, he's just screaming. It's just, it's rage and sorrow mm-hmm. and he's sad and he just... Like, he can't express himself other than screaming, and it's also super convenient that all of the other ints know that that scream means shit's about to get real. Mm-hmm. Um, like, <laughs> There's, like, that one that one tree who's, like, uh, who's dressed like, uh, oh, what was that rapper? Um, oh, I can't think of it right now. Play by Pain. Uh, well, I'm thinking like more like Buster Rhymes for the time period, but it's like, yeah. there's that one tree, and he's like, oh, shit, and he turns around, and it's like, yep. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. It's go time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. When Ab- that absolutely. So wh- I watched it during when I watched it on the big screen, and that moment happens, and I get the goosebumps, and I'm just pumped, right? So I went back and rewatched it again because I wanted to screen capture the moment because I was I wanted to post it on Twitter. And for some reason, watching it on my smaller screen here, really getting into the moment when uh Treebeard is having this moment where he's lamenting. I've known some of these, you know, since they were acorns and like I started weeping. It was so emotional because it's like it's a tree. It's a CGI tree with John <laughs> Reese Davies, who's Gimli. You know, it's his voice acting. 
but he does such a good job voice acting. Like you can feel the sadness in his voice. Like it was, I, I got emotional. And then when he screamed, I was like, it's time to go kick some, you know, wizard butt. I was so into it. I just, like, that's the stuff that I just eat up in this movie. See, now, Sean, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away your emotional that's fine. experience you here. You can make fun of me what, all you want to. What, I don't care. No, but what I envisioned was because John Reese davies you know, is both Gimli and Treebeard, all I could think of when I hear him screaming is the fact that they have to literally airlift a recliner for him to be on set no matter where they were during the movie. So if it was like on the side of a mountain, they'd have to fly this recliner thing Are you serious? halfway up the mountain oh, just yeah. so that John Reese davies could sit yeah. down. And so I'm thinking to myself, it's like, you know, John Reese davies just bellered like he was, you know, rocking out in front of 25,000 people. He's going to go sit down that recliner after he did that. You know? <laughs> I didn't know that. That's awesome. I guess. I don't know. I didn't know that. It gets it's, it's it in his in contract. His retainer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's all I was thinking of. That's all I can think of watching this movie. Like if they're up on top of a mountain and they're doing some like awesome panoramic shot and they're like running, you know, I'm like yeah, somebody had to airlift a recliner up there. That's got to be great. That's that's high life right there. Wow. Could you imagine like all the other actors having no idea that's a part of someone's contract and they're just like, it's taking so long to get started today. <laughs> well, Why is the well, helicopter like, how, carrying a recliner? Yo, he's he's running up the side of a mountain in his full gear. It's like. What kind of movie are we making right now? <laughs> can, can you imagine someone, I mean, just being this is their first movie and this is their first job acting and then they see this guy? Yeah. Like, I would think, how pretentious is this guy? <laughs> like, <laughs> He's like, I was in Indiana like Jones 1 and 3. I can get a recliner, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's probably there. why he had to get taken off the of sliders. They're like, we keep changing locations, and this guy's from recliner has to come everywhere. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> we can't keep we can't doing, doing this, this anymore. Jet, <laughs> jet fool ain't cheap, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, great. but uh, Sean, going back to what you said about Treebeard, though, it does bring up a good point that as we explore these other areas of Middle Earth, we are getting far more context than you would have gotten just from you know part one. And I do take like tip my hat to what they did choose to adapt here because there's a lot of reasons for why the characters in this movie are kind of stuck where they are. And I'm talking about the realm of, of, uh, of Rohan, you know, Gondor, even the elves, uh, not just the Rivendell elves that we know from the first movie, um, but also the Mirkwoodian elves who are to the, they would be to the east of where like Rohan is. So every one of these communities is pinned down in some way or another because you have Gondor to the the southeast, right, where where Gondor is, or uh, sorry, Mordor, sorry, and then you actually have uh, Angmar to the north, and then Dol Guldur, which is like south of Mirkwood. So all of these communities are having to fight some form of of like orcs, evil, and that's yeah. why yeah, that's why every single one of these is pinned down in a uniquely different way. There's not just one source of e evil here. It's like, it's all over this side of the map. And so that struggle is ta taking a toll on all of these individual parties. And you get to see how that unfolds in this movie. So it's, I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's the politics of, uh, of game of Thrones, but whittled down to, you know, Tolkienville. Well, and you, you make a great point because the geography of all this is so important and, you know, we are fortunate because, I, well, at least I'm fortunate because I'm such a geek of all this stuff. I know where everything is in Middle Earth and know that, right? My wife had no clue or has no clue, but she could still enjoy it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So it's, yeah. It, they, they did it well. You know, there's a reason why Game of Thrones, and I hate to keep bringing them up, but there's a reason why they showed the map at the beginning of every single episode. Uh, to, because where things are, at least at the beginning of the uh, the show, made sense and and played a part of the story, and um, I, I find that yeah I find that interesting because I never thought of that 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 knowing where these things are you know how in trouble these places are especially if Isengard was able to take over Rohan. Well, and that's that, if that you make a really good point there too. If you've never looked at a map of Middle Earth, uh, really this this part of the of the trilogy, if you just drew like a, a straight line down the middle, there's like a mountain range that just cuts through middle earth, yep. like right through the middle of the map. And so on one side, you've got Rivendell, 
the other side you've got uh, Merkwood that I mentioned earlier, and then Rohan is kind of like right in between those two in in the mountain range. So, and then you know south of Rohan is Gondor. So that like that's where most of this movie is taking place is just north of there. And we don't need to get into like the you know the the books aspect of it because <laughs> because we'd be here all night. Oh, yeah. Um but the but that's just that's kind of what I want people to think about because a lot of folks say there's some plot holes here. There's stuff in the books that that you know that didn't happen that happened in the movie. And it's like no, this there are some creative solutions to make things happen here. And I think the the constant like pressure that, that all these communities are facing, that's really the takeaway. Yeah, it's a really um, it's really interesting kind of thought process that I personally had not really ever had. Honestly, that's that's really kind of different and fun. I mean, fun's not the right word, but different way to look at it. Um, the the one thing that I'm kind of glad the the the, ex, the extended of it edition the gosh I can't talk tonight sorry guys the extended edition does better than the theatrical edition is um, we get some more dialogue about the passage of time that we mm-hmm. don't get mm-hmm. in the theatrical the theatrical version makes it kind of feel like this is all taking place over a weekend and, yeah yeah and whereas in this one like. I mean, even when they get to the bog, right, when Sam and Frodo and Gollum get to the bog, I mean, Sam says, we haven't seen a bird in two days to let us yeah. know that it's taken them two days to get to this part of the bog. Right. And and there's a couple other moments where it's like, you know, when Gandalf says, all right, I'm, I'll be back in five days. Yes. So, like, the idea that it took them like two days to get to, to Helm's Deep, and they were probably there like another day or two before Aragorn finally showed up. And then they had like another day to prepare while he was there. Like it took a long time. Yeah. Like I, I appreciate that. I know, Sam, that's one of your, your biggest griefs about the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones. It's like people are traveling thousands of Light miles speed. in a minute yeah. and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I I think that that could be Peter Jackson's way of sort of putting the audience you know we've we've talked about how these movies kind of drag out and they're a little bit longer but I think maybe this is his way of helping us understand that this is not just happening over a few hours or over a weekend this is a very long process throughout these three movies and not only that but I think it's his way of you know, putting the people in this world, putting the audience in the world of Lord of the Rings, because you're immersed in it for such a long time, whether you're in the theatrical version or the extended version, <laughs> you're just, you're living in this world. And I, I honestly think that's why people cared and still care about this and Harry Potter and, you know, Harry Potter movies were of course shorter, but there were so many of them, you know, you watch them, back to back or whatever. And you're just, you're immersed in the world. Um, I think before this, the longest movie I'd ever seen was Lawrence of Arabia, which was way too long. Uh, I've never <laughs> seen gone with the wind, but it's, it's about as long as Lawrence of Arabia, if not longer. And this one is right up there. I mean, these, these three, they're all about almost three hours, right? It's three hours, yeah. 55 minutes from start to the end of the credits. It's almost yeah. four hours, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, you, you literally, if you're not invested in what's going on, you're either trapped or <laughs> you're going to leave. You know, like somebody's holding you hostage, you're invested, or you got to get out. Oh, there. God, what movie was it? Um, English Patient. I felt trapped in that freaking movie. <laughs> I have never felt so trapped in a movie in my life. English Patient, oh, Lord. You know, anyway. but it's a good point that you bring up when uh, just how you feel kind of like this, the, the terrains and, and how difficult each journey is individually, mm-hmm. because, you know, each one is a completely different backdrop, right? The contrast is totally different. Um, I felt bad for, for Sam and Frodo because, you know what, guys, vertical hiking, that's not easy. Mm-hmm. Let alone not, not, not having shoes. Um, so, I mean, standing vertically is hard for me. <laughs> yeah, vertically walking is rough. Yeah, let alone hiking. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that that's what I thought was really well done here is that each 
you know, each environment is very starkly different, even though, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just a little bit, you know, uh, I say short distance, quote unquote on the map. Um, but that's what I think really does it for me is that the immersion is because of the environments that you get plotted into or, or, or put into, and you're allowed and you're given enough time to truly appreciate just how difficult that aspect of the journey is. So whether it's going from, uh, you know, Asgiliath, you know, going up to the stairways for the, uh, for the hobbits and, you know, what's going on in, you know, Rohan and navigating the, the Riddamark, you know, that, that whole part of it, you just get a, a really good feel for where you are. And so that's why I think that detail is important. Um, it's, it's distinct and, uh, that's what builds the movie out for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, Gosh, these are all such great points, and I don't really know how to follow it up with anything I have to say other than, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I just the 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 stuff that it really, really gets me for this movie specifically is, um, like like the 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 acting of Grima Wertung, right? That that actor who I can never remember his name. He's, Brad Dorif. Yeah, he's so good in this. And mm-hmm. where did we see him recently? I thought we didn't we watch him in something recently. Oh, I watched him in that Alien movie. That's what it was. I watched him in that Alien Four thing. Um, okay, never mind. Uh, but just <laughs> sorry, different podcast. I get them all mixed up. But he's just really, really good. And um, I don't know. Not I just, to mention he's Chucky. That, that 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 dude is Chucky. Oh, that's fun. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And, and this isn't to necessarily uh, pull the rug out from under you, but talking about him for a moment, and and also leaning on the extended edition for a minute here too. Um, the extended edition does a lot more uh, to give a foothold to the plot of Rohan, right? Because you get to meet, uh, well, you don't get to meet him technically, but you see Theoden's son Theodred, who really just gets like uh you know a blip in the theatrical version yeah right like you you see him basically on his deathbed um in this one you, you get to see a little bit more you know plot going on with building out the fact that wow we actually have more than one army of orc that we have to deal with because now we're seeing the white hand of saruman pop up you know j- just like a reminder of your car's extended warranty and it's freaking people out because the, the plains people didn't know about this yet like we know that our towns are burning, we didn't realize it was because of a potential second large army showing up. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, the theatrical version builds that out a little bit better, um, and I think it gives it a little bit more weight as opposed to, wow, we've got more, uh, you know, cannon fodder showing up, and so it's, yeah, I think it just felt a little bit more impactful uh, if you watch it this way, as opposed to, you know, folks that only saw it in the theater. Yeah. Did anybody else find that scene a little odd where Vigo Mortensen took the animal crackers and walked him up Liv Tyler's stomach? <laughs> Slightly out of place, but you know, it, yeah. when, when the world's about to end, right. you got to do it. Yeah, got to well, try it. Strategy, man. He had to figure well, out what, you know. I did, a, I did appreciate the use of Aerosmith in the background. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little strange, but you know, whatever. It's not, not any stranger than seeing him as a CGI elf in the Polar Express. So there you go. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah. It, it is a good point though that you get a little bit more cohesiveness to their relationship in this movie though, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know, in the in the theatrical versions they still do use some of the scenes, especially when you know, she hands off, uh, you know, her, her essence or whatever, you know, her little mm-hmm. necklace that she has, um, that shows up in a different scene later in the theatrical version in return of the King. And, but in this one, you get to actually understand a bit more about the departure at Rivendell and what actually happens there. Mm-hmm. And so I start to think about stuff that, you know, maybe should have stayed in at this stage. You know, why did we pull this stuff out? Because you knew he wasn't going to hook up with, you know, with lady or Rohan. He just wasn't. Yeah, I mean, this is the mm-hmm. this is the goddamn king, the future king of Gondor. He's not going to do this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's he this this guy. Let me tell you about this guy. Yeah, he's 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 uh yeah he's he's bona fide. Okay, 
So he's not going to hook up with her. That's why I think it's much more important to focus on that relationship. Uh, and, and so for me, that's why I kind of felt cheated a bit the first time I saw the extended edition. Because I'm thinking, why did we not use this context? The same it thing had goes, to have been the length. It had to have been uh, he was having a hard enough time selling a three hour movie. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that they just decided that the I'm, I'm sure the, the mm-hmm. uh, whatchamacallit forced him to cut some scenes. The uh, I, studio. I would agree with you on that point, Sam, except for the, the spot when. Uh, when we first get back to Rohan, okay, and we start talking mm-hmm. about kicking people out, and there's a subtle change in the extended edition where you know you basically um, uh, you're just kicking folks out and you're just talking about it. But then this in this extended edition, he, like there's actually shown that there's a signed, like you know, written contract from the king. Granted, it's like all, all squiggly and yeah, they probably just touched his Zoomy hand in the paper. Out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But they even cut stuff like that. They even cut those small things out that they took up the same space. So, oh yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. saying it was a bad, uh, you know, good thing that they cut it. I'm just saying that they they had to find For time. Space. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I imagine yeah. it had to have been a tough decision. It just had. Oh to gosh, been. yeah, yeah, because it's good stuff. It's such good stuff, and you've got people. I love my wife to death, but you got people like my wife just screaming, you know, just get over it or just, just get to it. You know, <laughs> when are they going to get there? Um, you know, that, that whole type so of get thing. there when they get so. there, <laughs> the road trip, get there when we get there. Uh, my, the, my the God, they're walking forever. You know, that type <laughs> of there's thing. a sex joke in there somewhere, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> we have to take our time and talk about potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one thing I, I, I always have thought is that it always feels like Rohan is like the stepchild kingdom. Oh, gosh, yeah. Gondor is this beautiful city that was built thousands of years ago by the people that that were, um, I mean, it was it was literally built to be a, uh, a guard tower against the forces of Mordor, along with Minas Morgul, which is actually technically in Mordor, and... Like it, it just feels like Gondor is this kingdom with power and whatever. And Rohan's like, we got horses. <laughs> I mean, like even the like the citadel of Rohan just feels like something that just I don't know, just like some dudes built on a weekend. I uh, mm-hmm. just always kind of feel strange to me. Like if Helm's Deep is this powerful thing, then why don't you make that your seat of power? Because I guess it's not no very. Word. There's nowhere to grow things, I guess. There's not, a, you know, yeah. no farmland nearby. But. It's a I mean, if they've got if they've got horses, I know of at least one fan. Yeah, <laughs> really gonna enjoy <laughs> Rohan. <laughs> yeah, but think about geography for a second, though. When you look at Tolkien and and where he lived, right, and then you yeah. start to look at the, the realms of men in, you know, in, in Lord of the Rings, uh, you've got not just location based things that make sense but you also have physical things that make sense so the the folks in gondor like i I jokingly say they resemble like a um you know like basically a hot italian guy because that's what they that's what they look like their hair is darker their skin is a different complexion and the folks of the north represent northern europeans like if you look at the uh, the folks in rohan and they they do resemble more of northern european countries so it's it's a combination of you know fiction and and real geography coming together. Um, and I'm not saying that the politics are the exact same, because I'm not going to pretend like I know European uh, uh, <laughs> politics <laughs> at all. Um, but specifically, though, that's that's kind of what you've got here. You've got some power dynamics that mimic real-world ones. And so um, it's a, yeah, kind of a clash of that. Nope. Sorry, I brought way too much to this. No, no, <laughs> no dude. man, I'm loving it. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was hoping you explained why some of them look like they're in what appears to be later Hosen, but now it makes all the more sense to me. Yeah. Well, Different hey, parts not, of Europe coming together. Not even joking, man. If you look at any of like the Rohan architecture, I mean, if you're going and like toking up, you know, if you go, <laughs> if you fly into Amsterdam, you start smoking, you're looking around, you're like, am I in Rohan right now? Is this, is this the drugs or am I just in Rohan? I can't it does feel it like it, it does have like but, a Greek, not Greek. It does have like a Norse mythology kind of feel to it. I mean, like their oh, yeah. swords look like the sword version of Mjolnir. Like, 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it does. You're not wrong. Um, I hadn't really ever thought of it until you said it, which is like the third time I think I've said that today. But um, yeah, no, you're, you're right. That is. And it is also interesting that the, um, like the men from the South, you know, they look different too, which is a cool detail. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still also amazed in this world that men can be the top of the food chain with giant eagles and elephants yeah. and all mm-hmm. of these things that kill can kill you like whatever that what water monster thing was at the you know in the back door mm-hmm. of moria like how are yep. there people alive yeah <laughs> and I, I i believe it's pronounced oliphant uh, okay fine. he's it's an o right Oli, oliphant it's, it's, it's an o he, he says it interesting like, it's an oliphant he, he says, says like he's a little irish boy yeah he, he also oh, says potato oh, it's an oh, it's an yeah. that looks like an oliphant there yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, the, the monster in Moria, that's the watcher in the water. That, yeah. That's a very specific name. I wish they would have just called it something, you know, uh, you know, like, Steven. Each, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen, <laughs> great. Stephen. Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Watch out or for like, Stephen. I think of Kevin. I knew a you. Kevin who was like a dick and like put up signs all over my, my neighborhood. <laughs> and if he would have been like more like Kevin, they would have known not to go near the water, though. What, what Sam, does it say, Gandalf? You mean, um, Kevin and Enter. Steven. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <Every time. laughs> Oh, it was queued up. Fantastic. Oh yeah. We have a we have a <laughs> recurring guest that comes on. His name is Steven. So every time he comes on, I have to play. I have to play that. Yeah. Um yeah. I'm sorry, did you say that uh, Helm's Deep was what now? It's a trap. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the only thing I haven't said yet without losing breath mm-hmm. here, you know, it was it was the actual fight of, of Helm's Deep itself. And uh, that was one of the, the points where when we were in the theater, there were people who were going, Hey, the elves didn't show up. Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. And, <laughs> we had a deal. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, that's like the one thing that some folks will say is a, you know, is a plot hole or whatever. Um, and uh, I know I said I wasn't going to do book versus movie cause that takes a long time, but going back to the dynamic we talked about before, I think that really explains you know, maybe a little bit more of this is that uh, because of the fact there's all of these different scenarios that are happening to each one of these unique areas of Middle Earth, um, it might make sense that there's a contingency of elves that, you know, were hanging out in Mirkwood and went, you know what, we got the call. We didn't let it go to voicemail. How you doing? Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> and, and I think it made for, um, I mean, and I liked, trust me, I liked how it was done in the book. I like how it was done in the movie. Um, but I, I think it added a little bit more sense of hope where it was damn near gone, right? It, yeah. Like, like you're you're feeling the despair of of the people of Rohan who just watched like, you know, the number the number two bodyguard got his face gnawed off by a mutant dog, you know, in front of everybody, <laughs> and and now they're like, oh man, like, yeah, I think I'm about to cash in my my stock here in Rohan and 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 just wait this one out. <laughs> but no, no, you you get a little. You know, a little bit of pep back in your step. I think um, I think that was a really smart choice for this movie. I I like it simply because it gives it makes it as weird as it sounds. It makes the fight a little more believable because I mean I think they even say it's like three hundred versus ten thousand or something like that. Like yeah, mm-hmm. like I know we're not watching three hundred, but I mean. Okay, let's say they had 300 fighting men. Here comes another 100 elves. Okay, now I get it. Like, okay, now I can see why, how they were able to hold them off as long as they were able to. Um, because if it wasn't for the, you know, the explody bomb part, like, they were doing they were okay. Doing well. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they were holding their own. I mean, those berserkers that climb over the wall and were doing some damage, I mean, Gimli was taking them out pretty great. And... We haven't mentioned it yet, but Gimli and Legolas in a competition over who gets to kill mm. the most orcs is the best thing ever. It yeah. cracks <laughs> me up so much. Well, and it it also makes that scene or you know makes that moment in the movie a, a little lighter because it is a yeah. heavy. I mean, people are dying and people yeah. are getting killed, but that gives it a little bit of levity, so yep. that you're you know you're still you're entertained and. Well, horrified at the same time but like you i mean you followed up with um toss me 
And don't tell the elf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you also have to, like, you have to, have we have to, to remember work. that. I mean, that is what she said, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this episode. No, 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 no. She said not the beard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh I had that somewhere. Um, <laughs> Dude. Uh, but no, like, because, like, when they're, when they have the montage, oh, do I need to play the montage clip? Um, <laughs> When we have the montage of them arming the citizenry, there are like boys. I mean, 15 year old oh, yeah. boys getting yeah. drafted into the army. And so there's this really sad moment. And I, I think even one of my notes was like, oh, being a parent, that, that, that hits harder this time, you know, mm-hmm. than like the last time I watched it when I wasn't a parent. You know, it's like my son's nine. Like he's almost old, old enough to be in the fight. In this yeah. in this thing, you know, so but that's how desperate they were, though. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's how desperate they had to have as many, you know, swinging arms with sharp objects as possible, even if they are very short arms. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that, that that you're right. You're one hundred percent right. Is that that's why they did it, and it totally makes sense. But it's still like it's still rough. You know, it's hard. Like you just you feel bad. Um, uh, yeah, I mean. It, well, and Sean, there's also a lot of powerful, not just imagery here, like when you've got the, especially the armor scene, where you've got like light shining in from outside and, you know, you, you, things kind of slow down, they kind of quiet down a little bit and just kind of take in these individual elements that you're seeing. Um, I think some of the most powerful lines from this whole series comes from this movie, um, especially when you, you butt it up against things like, you know, what can men do against such reckless hate, you know, um, uh, there's the other one, you know, like how did it come to this? You know, all that kind of stuff. You think about it, and and you're right. As a as a as a non-parent or as a teenager, when I was watching it versus being an adult, you're like, wow, I cry a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, because uh, yeah. Well, being a parent changes your view for sure, right? It's it changes your your your, you know, I don't want to say you're selfish before you have kids, but just that feeling of, hey, that could be my kid can be devastating. So, yeah. I was selfish before and after, but it did, <laughs> hit, di- it did hit differently. Sure. Yes, I agree. As it does. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to run through just a few of my notes here uh, as before I play some clips because I, I got a few clips here. Um, uh, we mentioned already, uh, other than the fact that we we love, we laugh at Gimli and there, there's a little bit of a, a comedic whatever there um I, uh, let's see hold on i had i had it queued up and then i lost it um nobody tosses a dwarf not the beard there you go there's your, <laughs> there's your beard um uh let's see hold on real quick sorry um oh i didn't okay one part that's always kind of annoyed me is when they let grima worm tongue leave like they let him live but don't give him a horse let him walk yeah yeah <laughs> Like, if he has to walk his ass back to Saruman, then they get to Helm's Deep, and they've got, like, two weeks before they get the, the, the orcs show up, or the orc guys show right. up. You know, because... Well, see, Rohan is so lousy with horses. They're just everywhere. They're like cockroaches. <laughs> <You're not laughs> They're just, he just probably just picked one up on the side yeah. of the road yeah. before it scurried away, and he just rode it right back. Yeah. I just assumed it was like Poland. Whenever it was growing up, everyone had a pony. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. You get a Rohan, you're tiny, you get a pony. Yeah, you're probably uh-huh. right. We yeah. haven't talked about Andy Circus enough, I don't think, or I guess really at all. But not only is he brilliant, as as his pr- uh, prediction is not the word depiction of Gollum. Depiction. Thank yeah. you. But also the way that they show that he's talking to himself, like he's a little mad. Where they have the yeah. camera angle on the left, he's <laughs> insane, or he's he's yeah. nice, and the camera mm-hmm. on the right is bad Gollum, like. Everything about that is brilliant because it's hard uh-huh. to show an internal monologue on film. Or yeah. even if he's having it out loud, it's boring to just watch somebody talk to themselves. But just filming it like that gives you something different to look at and it lets us, the viewer, know who's talking. It's a different character. It's a different yeah. character. It's, it's Smeagol yeah. versus Gollum. Yeah. It's so yeah. brilliant. Mm-hmm. It's just stuff like that that just makes me lose my mind. Um Let's see what else we else we uh, mentioned that I mentioned that. 
Uh, I don't remember the nuclear explosion outside while the king is being armored up. I mean, could they not have put that light directly? I mean, like, did J.J. Abrams see that and go, I'm going to make Star Trek entirely off of that? Um, <laughs> that is called, yeah, that is called the Middle Earth Lens Flare. Yeah, oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. I mean, yeah. my wife says, she looks at me and goes, did, seriously, did a nuclear explosion just happen outside? I said, I guess they were really <laughs> wanting to emphasize something i don't know uh that's actually it um uh oh last one i know um i do like that frodo is teaching sam about being a bully i kind of like that um anyway, just kinda... yeah i we, we, I we did gloss over this a little mm-hmm. bit uh one thing that, that they did a good job with here that i don't think has much time other than uh, butting it up against what happens in Return of the King is is showing that while um, you know Frodo's sense of humanity changes drastically, right? The longer he holds the ring, mm-hmm. at the beginning of this movie, when they're you know uh, basically using the elven rope to scale down the wall, mm-hmm. and he's got this little box that falls out of his backpack, and yeah. he's like, "Hey, hey, catch that, dang it!" And it's it's salt. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's the best salt in all the Shire. Yeah, that's the best Kush in this set of Hobbiton, okay? <laughs> and and you're like, and you go, this dude has just watched a whole bunch of people die. He's almost died himself. Uh, the only thing he's probably got in his stomach right now is lemon bread, right? Mm-hmm. And and he cares about salt. And you're like, this is what is keeping at least this party together mm-hmm. is this dude. He cares about salt. I mean, I do because I love it on my food, but th- I mean, I didn't realize I had a soulmate in, in this guy until just now. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> so. the 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 two things about that that really I enjoy is one is that Frodo nearly dies trying to pr- try to protect it now because he doesn't know that the ground is a foot and a half beneath him, yeah. but like he he risks his life for this thing because he doesn't know. He just his friend said catch it, and he did. But the the one thing that's a little bummer is it would have I wish there would have been a payoff with that is that when he's cooking the rabbits you see him yeah. holding mm-hmm. the box as he's putting salt in and then taste it and go ah that's better like give me yeah. the payoff with that uh, I think that would have been kind of fun but see now Sean I'm gonna poke a hole in that okay you can't. I, I will. No, I'm it's going perfect. to. It's impervious. Every, every, <laughs> everyone knows, Sean, you don't put the salt in right away. If you do, it has a chance to boil off, and therefore you don't have much flavor. Well, I it, mean, it just, just happens. It also doesn't matter because they don't get to eat it anyway. They get captured, <laughs> and I'm, his, his pot is just still there cooking. Those, you That's know, some, sad. some wolf <sighs> came by and ate them or something. Poor conies. I know. I feel bad. <laughs> well, I mean, his pot's gone too. Like that's a bummer. Like those things are don't for nothing. aren't easy to come by. So yeah, uh, that probably means that this his salt is still there. Now that I think about it, but oh man, yeah. But like he could have done the, the thing. Tragedy he could have of this movie because you see yeah. him tasting the spoon. <laughs> like you, you, maybe he does the salt in the spoon bit, right? You know, where he takes it and t- puts a little bit. And he's like, ah, oh, that's that. You know what I'm saying? Like. Give it. Mm-hmm. Give, then he has his chef's kiss moment. Anyway, I'm trying to really do something dumb for an otherwise fantastic movie. Um, <laughs> uh, we also really haven't talked about Faramir much, but you know he's uh, poor Faramir. You know he's. I mean, he's just a walking trope, and you feel bad for him, right? Like, dad doesn't like him, can't live up to his brother, makes all the wrong decisions, like. Every trope that you need for a dude, it, like it's there, he is, and, uh-huh. um, but it's really well acted, and I, I like that actor. He's in this movie and Three Hundred, and I don't, I don't know him yeah. from anything else. David Wenham, yeah, he, yeah. he was also in uh, Van Helsing. He played uh, the mm-hmm. friar in that, and he was really good there. Yep. There, there's something about David Wenham that. Uh, he just he can he can harness an emotion with a, a look on his face that you don't need an explanation of, and and I think he does a really good job of this, uh, theatrical and extended. You don't need context. You just look at his face and you go, yeah, that guy's got daddy issues. You just see him <laughs> right uh, away. It, mm-hmm. He was also in, uh, uh, oh, what was the Marvel uh, Iron Iron Fist? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, he oh, was yeah, an yeah, Iron yeah. Fist. Oh, yeah, was. he yeah. was the yeah. the guy. You haven't seen it yet, Sam, or have you? Oh, Iron Fist? No, not yeah. Iron Fist. Yes, it's not a spoiler. He's just in it. <laughs> wasn't. Yeah, yeah. He's well, I'm it. not going to watch that one either. Oh, you should watch that one. You should watch <laughs> yeah, that one. There's Iron. It's pretty Fist. good. Yeah. It's gotten really bad reviews. Yeah, whatever. Those people are stupid. Go watch it. <laughs> it gives you like Co- Colleen mm-hmm. Chin, Colleen <laughs> Wing, Colleen. Oh, Colleen. she's great. Yeah, she's great. She's fantastic. I mean, she's the best part of that series. Honestly. She really yeah. is. Yeah. Go watch and, it. And Sam, don't listen to people that re- review things. What do they know? What do they know? They're, They're all nothing. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Except Idiots. our show. Oh, we... If anybody out there listening listens to people review things, get a real life. Yeah. On, you know, what you really need is an Iron Fist unboxing. That'll help you get into it. Forget the reviews. You do the other fad. Mm. Oh, is that a thing? The <laughs> unboxing? No. Oh yeah, you just put an unboxing Iron Fist like YouTube video up, and pff, kids will yeah, be all over it. W- weren't we going to put uh, ghost pepper extract into a vape? I thought that's what yep. we we're going to be doing at the end of this <laughs> tonight. <laughs> oh dear God! Oh, oh. Yep. we're going to go with spicy tasting after vape. that. I like it. Uh, he was also in Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Men Tell No Tales. He was Scarfield. Yeah. Which is the brother? It's the pirate version of Garfield. Scarfield. <laughs> he hates Mondays. I think I forgot, I think I forgot a bunch of lasagna on the boat. Tales as as <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely have. I've uh, let that one go out of my mind. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> have room for it. He hates the yep. Mondays. Are okay. <laughs> uh, Monday. Is it Monday monkey lives to the weekend. I think is what it is. <laughs> it's a Futurama <laughs> reference. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Which, okay, so once again, I, I'm I'm doing the flipping back and forth between theatrical and extended because, Sean, you mentioned you, you've seen this film how many times? I mean, it's it, we're double digits easily, easily. 10, okay. 12, 15. I, I, I'm not ashamed to say this. I've probably seen the film uh, in the theatrical and the extended. I've probably seen the extended t- more times than the theatrical, but we're probably into the 50s. Oh, wow. I, I'm, I'm, I might even oh. be closer to 100 at this point. I've seen the, these films many, many times. I, I, I have cycle time to poop with all this viewing. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> hey, that's why you get digital codes, okay? You could take it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the, uh, the, the best context we have, I think, in any of these films is the, the, the opportunity to explore what happens leading up to the first movie for Boromir and Faramir. And it's, it's the only time you get to see it at all with these two characters is in this extended version. And it's, it's right after they take us Geliath back from the, from, from Mordor. And you get to see this little exchange and, and you realize that uh, Boromir and Faramir both don't really like their dad at all. And it's, it's a tough scene to get through. It, it's really hard to get through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it it really point uh, paints Boromir as kind of less of the douche is that what we get in Fellowship mm-hmm. because I mean mm-hmm. almost immediately in Fellowship he sucks, right? Like yeah. the first yeah. time we see him, he shows up and he's like, "Oh, like hey, a sword. Oh, it's sharp." Drops from the ground. He walks away. He talks about Isildur has no heir. Gondor needs no king. I'm the man. Like he kind of comes across as this arrogant douche, which is what makes his redemption at the end all more powerful. But then you see him in this scene, and it's like, he's just a good guy. Yeah, He's just a guy Mm -hmm. trying to please his dad, who, you know, I mean, he's he's the guy that can do no wrong, and the brother's the guy that can do no right. But, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. That that it's a great scene. It really is. Yeah, I mean, for an extended scene, it's. I mean, I I was blown away by it because as Gilead, you only get to see in frankly just bad lighting for most of return of the king you don't get to see much of it at all but in and, and there's a, there's some major scenes that happen there right and in this one i mean you get to see several aspects of the city um but in this extended scene he's literally standing up on one of the tallest you know buildings in in osgiliath and you get to see how big it truly is because i mean in the next movie they kind of treat it like it's a uh, like a rest stop. It's like a basically. village. Yeah. 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 Yep. Like, like there, there might be, you know, like the Taco Bell, uh, you know, KFC hanging out there and like two pumps and that's it. But it, in this one, it's like, no, this is a pretty big sprawling 
border city that controls going to Mordor. And so I think and that, the river, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, and just in the river, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm adding to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it makes it so much more important tactically, you know, uh, as, as a city and like what it serves, because it's kind of a throwaway thing. If you don't have this context, you know, going into it, if you're just watching theatrical, sorry, kind of being snobby now. Okay. Only, only watch, <laughs> only watch the extended version, people. Well, yeah, again, there's a reason why it's there. I mean, look, I, I've said that before yeah. on other movies. I mean, Kingdom of Heaven is a good movie. The theatrical, the theatrical version of Kingdom of Heaven is a fine movie, but the mm-hmm. extended version is a great film. It is a really, really and, great film, and it's a yeah. different film. Yeah, it is. That's what I was going to ready to say. It's it's like watching a different film. Yeah, it is. So. It's okay, I think, to be a little snobby about this kind of thing when it's in fact true. So yeah. Uh, okay, I do need to play clips because, well, <laughs> at some point I do have to end the podcast. All right, I did capture a few clips, and by a few I mean eight. And um, I think some mm, there we're all we're all kind of uh, all over the place in the far as the range of what they are. So here is the Master Dwarf Gimli. I'm wasted on cross country. We dwarves are natural sprinters. Very dangerous over short distances. <laughs> I always <laughs> love that. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, I mean, I think I use that excuse in gym class regularly through high school. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, <laughs> like lap running or doing the mile? Why did you have us do that? I'm wasted on the mile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I forgot what this one is. This is 20 seconds, and it's entitled Sam. I forgot what Uh-oh. it was. Uh-oh. Do not regret your decision to leave him. Oh, okay. Never mind. I know what this is. This is uh, Gandalf. I'm getting it set up. This is Gandalf talking to Aragorn, and I love this scene because, one, it's very quiet. You know, it's just the two of them standing there talking, and I love the sparkle in Ian McCallum's eye when Aragorn tells him that Frodo, that Sam's with him. Like, mm-hmm. that is yeah. enough to let him know that, oh, then we're going to be okay because Sam yeah. is with him. I love this scene. Okay, here we go. Do not regret your decision to leave him. Frodo must finish this task alone. He's not alone. Sam went with him. Did he? Did he indeed? Good. I just love that so much. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just. I don't know. It just there's there's something about the power of the friendship moment. You know, I I, I really really love it. Okay. Uh, Everybody needs a Sam. Yeah, yeah. It's me. Yeah. That's your Sam. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could have phrased that better. Oh, it's I know. Sam. He could have said, "I'm your Huckleberry." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's Gandalf saying awesome things. Give your full tongue behind your teeth. I have not passed through fire and death to bandy crooked words with a witless worm. Yeah, witless worm. I kind of thought that Sam would, would lead with that after his introduction tonight on the show, but I was wrong. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> um, Sorry, I didn't mean to. Here's some fine. good old fashioned Lord of the Rings trash talk Gandalf the White. Gandalf the Fool. <laughs> Ooh, burn. Gandalf words. Gandalf needs some ointment on that burn cream or whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. More like Gandalf the Fly. Mm. Bitch. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and that's when you turn the ca- you turn the walking stick sideways because shit's about to go down. Right. Just, you just drop it. It just drops it. It, it, it yep. breaks. And then he's upset. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you knew I was going to have to capture this one. What's totals, Brussels? What's totals, huh? Potatoes. There you go. Well, we got a little mushroom, stick him in a stew. Yep. <laughs> if all the lines in his, in his um, filmography... Do you think he understood how much we would be quoting that one still? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all these <laughs> really, really sweet lines like "If mm-hmm. I can't carry it, I'll carry you." And mm-hmm. 
Oh, the, the, he has a really nice monologue at the end of this thing about the times and we all, you know, all this stuff. But no, <laughs> it's, it's potatoes. Po- potatoes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, here's another little great moment. What's happening out there? Shall I describe it to you? Or would you like me to find you a box? <laughs> 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 yes i like it when they scream ladders like the ladders are coming up and he's like good <laughs> like i need something to do yes. i need somebody to kill uh okay here we go we are hobbits of the shire frodo baggins is my name and this is samwise Gamgee. your bodyguard is gardner try <laughs> ah his gardner you guys alluded to this earlier don't tell the elf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen that are listening, I apologize, but I had to do this. I love this scene so much. I wanted to share it. Yes, it's a long scene. If you don't want to listen to a minute and 56 uh, clip, oh my gosh. hit skip. But. This is the longest clip we've ever had. This is the longest clip we've ever had, but I, I had to so capture... getting demonetized. I don't care if we get kicked off YouTube or Spotify or whatever. I had to capture this. This is it's, this is beautiful. Here we go. Kicked off the internet for this one. Hey, whatever. I, 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 don't, I don't care. This might be the last... I think that's been fun, boys. Yeah, this I might be the last... Yeah, you, you guys are going to have to listen to us on AM radio after no. this. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of fun. I, I, you know, Sean, before you play this, I have a feeling that I might know what it is. You probably and because And I'll probably be able to recite the entire sequence, but let's see this thing. Okay. Let's, let's roll that beautiful bean footage. Here it is. Many of these trees were my friends. Creatures I had known from nut and acorn. I'm sorry, Treebeard. They had voices of their own. Saruman. A wizard should know better. No! of men for this treachery. Look, the trees. They're moving. Where are they going? They have business with the orcs. My business is with Isengard tonight. With a rock and stone. just got kicked off youtube i don't care i love that scene it's so powerful for me it is my favorite moment in lord of the rings um it, can, it is can i add a nitpick yeah go ahead there are sure a lot of ants right there at the forest edge yeah um before he called them to war yeah mm-hmm. well that's they my did... only nitpick of that scene it's like ah, eh, that's convenient you're not wrong. Yeah, they were mm-hmm. they were right there. I mean, it did feel like it took them a long time to gather the int moot, but mm-hmm. um, I mean, maybe the ants they, they they move so as it is. Maybe maybe Saruman knew that like you know that's the line. Like we don't go here because this is where the ants are, and I don't need them fighting out and mucking up my business. Maybe <laughs> I couldn't turn you know twenty <laughs> degrees to the right and uh, <laughs> and look see. See, maybe these were a special variety of Ents that were named Zoolanders. 
and they couldn't turn. <laughs> they can't turn. <laughs> they left. couldn't turn left, and that no. was the problem. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, one thing I wanted to drop here is like a just a, a quick knowledge check for folks that watch the extended edition only. Um, was near this scene, and it, it, I think it was a little bit before this. Was the uh, the ant drought that Marion Pippin drank in the forest? Yeah, yeah. that 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 was an important omission from the theatrical version because it provides a detail as to why Mary and Pippin are about three inches taller than everyone else when they go back to the Shire. Yeah, because <laughs> because they 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 drink this this ant draught, um, and for the people that like know fully that I, I should be a virgin based on this, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's two kinds of ent draughts. And so there's the one that basically it's like the, the one that replenishes, you know, it's like your, mm-hmm. it's like your daily vitamin. And then there's the one that nourishes, which helps you grow. And they were just plowing through that nourishment, man. So it I was, mean, it, that's your, that's your beefcake. That's your, your weight gain 9,000 right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love it. I, I, and I wish they would have kept it in. Because it's a it's a subtle thing that you you pick up on if you if you knew the detail. Uh, okay, it's time for this. And now for some more bad news. Ready? Probably every piece of trivia I'm about to read, uh, Mark has known for you know 25 years now, but uh, mm-hmm. it is it is what it is. Um, also, again, I will, sh- I will shut up. I will shut up. No, no, don't shut up. I, I invited you on my podcast to not do that. Um, <laughs> this is now. This is a movie that has a lot, a lot of trivia. I only read about the first 25 or 30, and then I just started scrolling through because again, it has like, a, literally, it has like 130, you know, inputs, entries in the trivia section. So these are just a few that I captured that I thought were interesting. Uh, There were so many extras used in the sequence at Helm's Deep that the filming went on for so many months that almost all the extras and principal actors got t-shirts reading, I Survived Helm's Deep. There were so many of these shirts that extras would often meet other extras in New Zealand's main cities because they would recognize the shirts. (laughs) (laughs) That's neat. When Frodo and Sam are in Osgiliath, Sam says, By all rights, we shouldn't even be here. This was a nod to the deviation the screenplay had taken from the book's storyline. In the book, Sam and Frodo never go through Osgiliath. <laughs> so mm-hmm. even, even, the bo- even the movie is self-aware a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, lastly, on the wall of Helm's Deep during the battle... The a one-eyed warrior turned to the camera, revealing his scarred, empty socket. The performer who played him showed up as an extra wearing an eye patch. Director Peter Jackson politely asked to see what was under the patch, and then inquired if the gentleman would be interested in appearing in the movie Sans Eye Patch. The gentleman was reluctant at first and quite self-conscious, but afterwards said the experience made him more com- comfortable with his condition. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, he recently Very. passed away too, unfortunately. Uh, Wayne Phillips. Yeah. Mm. Uh, wow. Of course you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Did you, did you go to his funeral? No, no, I did not. I did not, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I, I just remember because it, he it's it's distinct. Like the camera is panned right oh, on him. He right turns. on him. Yeah. You, you can't avoid oh, yeah. it. It's right there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Wayne Wayne Phillips, the late Wayne Phillips. I did the one thing that I have always kind of uh, really the, one of the nitpicks I would give of the movie is that when the the Uruk army, the Urukai, I should say, has shown up at Helm's Deep and they're just kind of standing there, and they're kind of having this, I don't know, they're just standing there, and then this one old dude looses an arrow before he means to, and then like the orcs all just like scream. Like my wife said, is that why the battle starts? I'm like, no. Like they were gonna fight anyway. <laughs> it like, breaks attention. Yeah. It's not yeah. like they needed extra motivation to kill all of the humans. But um, <laughs> well, we've if got he hadn't to. done that, they would have they would have just met in the middle and shook hands. And yeah, played yeah. the game of yeah. soccer and then been on their way. So <laughs> that's fine. Okay, time for this. Excuse me while I whip this out. Well, this movie pioneered the motion capture industry. <laughs> Mark, I think I caught you off guard with that one, didn't I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I? I haven't heard that in a while. I used to live in uh, in Boise, Idaho, and there was uh, a station called K106 out there. And every time 
they would start a new segment, they would play that. And nice. so I was like, <laughs> oh man. So yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> caught funny. me off guard. Oh. Yeah, it was funny. Um, so again, like I said, motion capture. So that's our category today. We're going to do some of our favorite motion capture characters in movies. And I will start with, um, I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to start with Mark. Oh, dude. Wow. yeah. Me. Yeah. Well, I would say my, my first pick, uh, would be Alan Tudyk for his, his work in iRobot. Oh yeah. Cause, cause uh, it just somehow this guy managed to <laughs> make a robot feel human, even though its face barely moves. Um, uh, how many do we need? How many do you, do you need me to come up with? Well, usually in a top three, you pick top three. three. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I lost track of number. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> two for me would be uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's Smog. You know, okay. going uh-huh. to uh, going oh, to the God. Hobbit series and watching him do do it is incredible. It just well, the the thing that bums <laughs> me out is that you watch that cool YouTube video and then you find out that they used none of it. Oh. Well, they used they used some of it to um, not exactly in the face because obviously his face doesn't match up perfectly with a dragon. Yeah, but the the movements of what the dragon should you know do based on the speech was used, and so it's I mean it's still impressive I think because you still you can you can feel that performance come through. So yeah, um, very big fan there, um, mm-hmm. and, and I gotta um, admit that I. I, I was going to do a little bit of a cop out here because Joe and I are both, you know, fairly big fans of uh, the Naughty Dog productions, right? Because they do motion capture for their games. And for me, I, I just got to give hats off to like the whole crew of like The Last of Us. Like, <laughs> I, know, I, I know it's kind of a cop out. Um, this is a game that I had a hard time getting into. And I didn't really appreciate it nearly as much until I started playing it myself. Um, and some of my favorite voice actors I discovered were also very good physical actors at the same time. And, and the last of us is what helped kind of open my eyes to that. So, um, so it's not a specific actor, but rather a, a collection of folks. No, that's fine. You're allowed to break the rules. You're the guest. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Joe, Yeah, well, um, actually, kind of in the same boat with Mark, uh, I ended up breaking the rules a little bit and going with just um, Uncharted for uh, Uncharted 4's motion capture sessions. Um, like that, watching them get into that, because that was it was an emotional game for me, knowing it was the end of the story for Nathan Drake. Um, and watching the actors um, like Nola North and Emily Rose like do their motion capture was was pretty emotional for me as well, so I put them up there. Um, uh, Bill Nye uh, from the Pirates of the mm. Caribbean movies that I really enjoy because I I love him in everything he's in, like even um, small parts. Like uh, he has a is a he's a museum curator in Doctor Who, and he's fantastic in that. But his motion capture and it was. Um, was it uh it's the second of the parts of the Caribbean movies? Yeah, Dead Man's oh, Chest. Yeah, Dead Man's Chest. And yep. the, and the third mm-hmm. one too. And and yeah, yeah. And World's End. Yeah, he's in both of them as Davy Jones. Yep. Um totally and then my last one in the in the third one, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. And my last one is definitely more more of a um definitely a gag with Jet Li um <laughs> as Emperor Chin in the mummy three (laughs) because you can just tell from his motion capture like this guy is here for the paycheck and the paycheck alone he does not (laughs) want to be here today it's like he he, like the entire thing was filmed on one friday for him it's a friday where he had plans that he really wanted to get to and he was stuck at work the whole time. <laughs> nice. And it, it didn't matter that like, he, he somehow turned into like a fire-breathing dragon. You could tell the dragon to give a either. He's like, nope, nope, don't want to be here. <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, Sam. All right, I've got um, my uh, my number three is uh, Natiri from Avatar. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, kind of James Cameron. If 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 Game of Thrones, not, not, not got it. Lord of the Rings started mocap. 
<laughs> I think Avatar really kind of perfected it um, and and went off from there. But uh, my number two is uh, again our good old friend, um, what's his face? <laughs> oh, Lord. Alan Tudyk. Gollum. Oh, uh, no, Andy Circus. No, um, Sir Andy Circus. Circus yeah. as Caesar in Planet mm-hmm. of the Apes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've got to say, my number one is, has to be uh, Thanos in Infinity War. Yeah. Josh yeah. Brolin. Yep. All right. Right on. Uh, I go next, and I have a list here in front of me that I will read now out loud. Um, my number, uh, someone mentioned, uh, Mark, I think you mentioned uh, Sonny from iRobot, uh, Mark Tudyk, or mm-hmm. Alan Tudyk. So yep. I'm going to swap him out with, um, well, it doesn't really count. Mm, <laughs> Because I was gonna say K two S O from Rogue One, but that's not really motion. Like he's wearing the suit, but there's mm-hmm. no facial. Like, there's no acting. He's just walking there in yeah. the spot <laughs> so they have something to act against. You know, it's not like you know. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna switch out with somebody else. So my number three now is gonna be um, all of the characters from the Adventures of Tintin, specifically <laughs> Andy Serkis mm-hmm. as the captain. Um, I, I we liked that movie. I had a good time with that. My number two is going to be all of the actors in Monster House. Oh, wow. Uh, we watch Ooh. that movie every year for Halloween. And uh, that movie was about five years too soon, but it's still a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's not quite, I don't, I mean, it, you know, it's, it, it, I don't have the issues with it. Like, like Sam has issues with the Polar Express. Like it's the, the dead eyes. Oh my eyes. God. But the that movie's eyes. not motion captured. I think that's just <laughs> animated. I don't mm-hmm. think that's mocap. Oh. Um, it doesn't look Mm-mm. like it is. It's evil. And then my number one is going to be, and again, I'm cheating, but I don't care. Uh, it's going to be the Ahsoka and Darth Maul battle in season seven of Clone Wars. They motion captured the fight scene, and it is mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. So, it is great. I know I cheated, but whatever. It I couldn't. Cheating. I couldn't <laughs> find it. Is- I know. That's fine. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find. I mean, any you do believe use video games. You at least use like something that's more movie esque. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised, Sam. You didn't go for um, like the Velociraptors from Jurassic World. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like seriously, no. aren't, aren't those people? No. Like, isn't that like there's right? Like, aren't there people there? Like, I'm no, not wrong, right? Or is it well? Yes and no. There's practical effects with people in raptor costumes. Um, believe it or not, I do but it. it's mainly uh, CGI. Okay. Are they in the inflatable ones? Because <laughs> <laughs> then credit to Chris Pratt for him keeping a straight face with guys in inflatable raptors all around him. I, I'm pretty sure they're called uh, raptories. Uh, they're, they're like, <laughs> oh god. Yeah. <laughs> they're proud people. <laughs> yeah, they meet in conventions and share small hotel rooms. But uh, oh my god, very proud. Smell people. like cabbage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> small hands. Yeah, small hands. <laughs> Only two things I hate. No, in this I, world. I, I tell you though, if I could get my hands on one of those raptor outfits, holy crap, it would be awesome. The, the yeah. stuff they made for the movie was the, the puppeteering in those. It's just impressive. Uh, Andrew. All right, I have uh, number three, Sean Gunn as Rocket Raccoon in yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, number two, I have Maz Kanata from uh, The Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Yeah. And then number one, I have Ty Sheridan from Ready Player One. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and pretty much yeah. any character in Ready Player One, except, the, you know, the live action people. Okay. <laughs> they don't count. They don't count. They, yeah. No. <laughs> We motion captured people. his real person. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, <laughs> we only had two responses, which is interesting. Like a lot of people responded to the tweet, you know, a lot of likes and a lot of retweets, but only Jesse and Cameron decided to participate. So thank you for Jesse and Cameron. <laughs> uh, Jesse from the Sudden But Inevitable podcast says Groot, Korg, and Gollum. And um, Cameron. I did say that, right? I did say Jesse from Sudden Butt, right? I've, yes, I have a yeah, bad yeah. habit of mixing those two guys up. And Cameron from Green Shirt says Gollum, Caesar, and Rocket. So nice. thank you to, mm-hmm. thank you for those, uh, for that. Okay. 
to, um, to jump on Sean Gunn for just a minute, I did want to give uh, an honorable mention to like another uh, collaborator of, of James Gunn, who uh, was Steve A.G., who did the mocap for King Shark in, uh, you know, the most recent Suicide Squad. Uh, Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. Squad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like even though Sylvester Stallone voiced him, Steve Ag, who was one of the, he's a comedian who I think he was one of the, uh, uh, one of the mutineers to um, that whole situation in Guardians. Um, he ended up stepping in to to do the mocap for that, so that had to have been fun. I imagine that was they were laughing yeah. their asses off doing that. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> but uh, yeah, either way, cool. Uh, all right, time for this. Wait, what's supposed to happen? This is where we give this movie a score uh, from 0 to 10. And unfortunately, my spreadsheet only has four spots. So you two get to flip a coin. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Andrew, you go first. Well, uh, I think, remind me, because you're looking at the sheet there. I think I gave last week's a 9.2 something. Is that right? I gave it an 8.95. 8.95. Okay, so not as high as I thought. But this one will have to go higher uh, because it is, I think, a better movie. Um, and so I'm going to go a 9.1 okay. out of 10. Okay, cool. Joe? Uh, I'm going to go 9 towers out of 10 towers on this one. All right. Um, just because I... I really like again how like the first like the first movie is my favorite of the series still Fellowship's my favorite, and like that ends on like a sour note. So it's like okay, well clearly there's more going on because our heroes have have disbanded. The Fellowship that we thought was supposed to be so strong already kind of crumbled. Not really not really together anymore. The band broke up a little bit, and then we see some moderate success, and then again inevitable like we're still we still got a long way to go here, gang. Um, so it's got that, like, again, like that empire strikes back feeling, but like elevated. So while the fellowship may be my favorite of the series, I am going to say this is probably the best of the series. So this is, this is going to be nine out of 10 towers. All right. Right on Mark. Uh, I'm going to give this one a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I don't see much wrong with this film. Other than two specific things, which is why it loses a half point. One of them for me is because I don't understand how Legolas can grab the opposite side of a horse and somehow <laughs> swing himself around it to get on the saddle. Physics. It just, you're going to break an elbow. That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> and then two, there is one part in this movie, the extended version of the movie that I o- always want to skip over. And that is Miranda Otto's funeral hymn when they're burying Theodred. Now, her, her role as Eowyn, it's a, it's a very well-cast role. She plays it brilliantly. But th- when she is singing, it, it, it just cuts through any patience I have every time. <laughs> <laughs> and and she, <laughs> it's not her fault. It is not her fault. They, there's a, I can't remember, but it's a specific type of hymn that she is singing, whatever. But I can't get through it. The whole rest of the film, though, it's damn near perfection. It is some of the best, like, it's, it's some of the best action sequences you're going to see uh, out of the whole series. Um, I, we've already mentioned it several times that this is my favorite one. Uh, it's, you know, I, I can't say enough about it. And for, for a, a second film in a trilogy, it does everything it needs to do. I mean, it sets up the plate for the next film well, but it also gives enough time to the elements that it chooses to focus on. And a lot of sequels can't do that. So um, for someone who shot three movies in a row and managed to give this much balance to the the middle part of the sandwich, uh, I, I got to give it that 9.5. Okay, cool. Sam? Yeah, um, I think I gave last week's a nine point one something. Um, I'm going to go a little. A, you gave it an eight point nine nine. Oh, eight point nine nine. Well, I'm going to give this one a nine point one five out of ten. Um, enjoyed it. I I like it better than Fellowship. Uh, the the third act alone in this one is just fantastic. The the storylines are perfect. You care about every and each character because of the groundwork that the Fellowship laid for us. Um, it made this this one fly and and the third one fly um, as far as it did. So nine nine point one five. Cool. 
Yeah, I asked uh, earlier. I don't know if uh, Mark, did you say is this which one is your favorite of the three? Because Joe told us that the fellowship was his, and we we told we answered this last week for ourselves. Oh, this is my favorite one out of the three. Okay. Yeah. If you said that, I apologize. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I think I may have said it briefly in the beginning. Yeah, that was two hours ago. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah briefly, <laughs> briefly. Yeah. Um, last week, the, the fellowship got a, a combined score of two, a 9.35, 9.235, excuse me. Uh, our guest giving it a, a 10. He said, this is his, the fellowship Ooh. is his like top three favorite movies of all time. Um, so good on him. i uh, just giving you some context. Uh, I gave last week a nine. I love this movie. I think it is better. Uh, it is my favorite of the trilogy. Does that mean that I think that The Return of the King is a better film? We'll find out next week. But in the meantime, I'm going to also give this, and by also, I mean, I guess not also, but I'm going to give it a 9.25. Um, rounding out, hmm, you know what? I'm going to cheat. No, I'm not going to do that. I can cheat because I can because I control the uh, the thing. The spreadsheet. I control the spreadsheet. I'm giving it a 9.5 which puts the score up to a 9.25 on the average, putting it just a little bit above fellowship. So Cameron, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But I think that's also a pretty fair assessment of how much we all love this movie. I don't think there's anything wrong with that score. And that definitely puts this movie in our top five favorite films we've ever reviewed. Oh yeah. Which I think is fine. Fair. Um, Yeah. I think it's very fair. Um, As it deserves to be there. It does. I think it does. Again, mm-hmm. we've watched a lot of shit films, but we've watched a lot of good stuff too. Um, yeah. I know that people can't people can't see this, but th- to me, that inspires De Niro face. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. We've all watched a lot of shit films. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We sat through Karate yeah. Christmas Miracle, and I got to tell you, this was a relief. <laughs> oh, Kar- oh, karate Christmas Miracle? <laughs> yep. That's, it's out there. Is it's that on our list, guys? It's we're worse not... than it sounds. That's that put... the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I've watched a lot of bad movies on purpose. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> we've got some good stuff coming up. I don't, I don't know. Um, uh... <laughs> don't spoil it with Karate Christmas Miracle. I mean, don't. you know, I'm just Definitely. saying, like, you know, the net is coming up for us. The net, Ooh. guys. Um, but we also have. Uh... This is before we knew what the net was really going to be. We also have mm. the Watchmen coming up too, so I'm actually excited. Ooh. About that. Anyway. Back when hacking was pressing the space bar five times. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. And blowing a comb with some aluminum foil over to get free cell phone service or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was in a movie. Uh, okay, my gosh, guys, this has been a blast. This has been a lot of fun. Yes, I knew this sh- episode would go um, incredibly Forever. long, and that's fine. Most of that's my fault. Some of it's Mark's. So Yes. Totally. <laughs> but speaking of Mark, Mark, Joe, please tell our listeners where they can find your show, and most importantly, the episode I was on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yes, we're the Digital Dissection Podcast. You can find us at Digital Dissect One. Uh, we have a blog as well that we put out mm-hmm. there, uh, aptly named the Digital Dissection Blog. Now we did collaborate with with Sean uh, mm-hmm. in our, our first season for uh, our Firefly Week, which we covered the movie Serenity, um, which uh, actually is part of our Firefly collection, quote unquote. That's through our yeah. link tree. That's on our on our page too, so you can find mm-hmm. that uh, there quickly and and, and easily. Um, otherwise, we're technically on break, so our second season is going to be starting up uh, in early March, and we've got uh, quite a few folks lined up that we're really excited to bring mm-hmm. uh, some conversations with as well as some retro content as we're known for. But, um, but yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the, uh, awesome. that's the Joe. Do I leave anything out? Uh, I mean, there is our only fans page, um, <laughs> which as it turns out, we don't have fans, so no one really goes there. So, I mean, you can, we can skip that. We'll just edit this out in post. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just, I just assumed that my invitation to season two is somewhere lost in the mail. Right. Totally joking. Um, I just well, wanted to... <laughs> we, they're, they're, they're whispers that you'll be coming back for season two. Ooh. 
I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, nothing like mm-hmm. putting your guests on the spot by um, embarrassing them. <laughs> All right. That's ensure. No yeah, that'll definitely ensure that uh, they come back onto the podcast. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Public threats always get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> nothing like doc- shame. Yeah, nothing shame like really well shame too. and uh, and doxing you since I actually have your addresses. No, I'm just teasing. Um, <laughs> guys, this has been a lot of fun. I can't believe we're doing this, but we did it, and this is this mm-hmm. is uh, this has been a blast. Um, we are cheap seat reviews. Uh, go to our website, cheap seat. Um, Cheap seat dot no gosh cheap seat reviews dot is this, I can't do it without my You're script in front of me. Dude. This is insane. Yeah. Uh, show notes. Show notes. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a callback. That's a callback. Yeah. Uh, there's about Lord. five listeners that get that reference. Um thank you for being that those five. Uh at cheap seat cast is Twitter, cheap seat reviews at gmail.com. And uh yeah, next week we're doing the return of the king with another special guest. And then after that, we are doing a Howard Shore introspective on the music of, I guess it's not an introspective because I'm not Howard Shore. Retrospective. <laughs> is that the word? I don't know. It's been a long day, guys. Um, <laughs> so on behalf of Mark, Joe, Andrew, and Sam, this is Sean saying thank you all so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Reviews.